right, it is 6.02. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, we do have a quorum. We're just missing one member, Rachel, and she'll be here in about 15 minutes. Um, let's see. Review and accept agenda. I myself have a document to add to the packet um, uh, for the first agenda item. It is um, some draft notes that the ENDS committee has been working on, which I failed to send out prior to the meeting. So when we're ready for that agenda item, if you want to each take one um, and glance at it when you can. I know this isn't optimal. Thank you. Yeah, I'll for myself. Um, anyone else, any uh, concerns, additions, subtractions, edits to the agenda? Great. So <laughs> we're going to move on to public comment. I don't see anyone online. So I'm even going to skip the preamble. Thank you. I get a good 12 seconds for someone to appear. Sure. 12. Okay. Um, so no public comment. But in case someone's here and I don't see them, we're always um, uh, open and we welcome public comment. Um, first, just some housekeeping to get out of the way. Um, review and simply accept um, a state or federal required policy. Second read of D3, responsible internet and computer use. Yes, Hannah, uh, thank you, board. Uh, in our last packet, we had a, an error. And what was actually included in the packet was E8, which is electronic uh, communications. And it is already a required and adopted policy. So it was just a paperwork error. So I would, this is the actual second read of D3, which was not in your packet last time, I apologize. And um, so that's, that's why it's being presented to you what seems like a third time, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> it is a required policy, so this is somewhat of a, a you know, scripted deal here. Um, well, but, we're permitted to add, yeah. but we can't remove. So mm -hmm. if there was yeah. something that you wanted added, um, we could do that. Yeah. Does anyone have something they'd like to add, something they're confused about? I mean, having Heather as a resource on these policies just to Translate for us is awfully nice as well. I'd also say that the Fisbit lawyers have reviewed the document as it sits. Mm -hmm. As you add, you add at your peril. So ah. I would suggest not adding to the required policies. The legal work on that policy has already been done. Got it. Right. So we do need a motion. Mm -hmm. Katya has moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. And has seconded further discussion. All those in favor of accepting D3 as written, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions. Great, passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, in our agenda meeting, I think we even gave us like ourselves like 10 minutes to go over that item. I don't know. <laughs> that was easy. All right, let's get into the, the the weeds and the muck here, and I mean that in the most loving way possible. Um, we've we've given an hour um, for each of these um, first two topics, them being the the topics kind of being the foundation of what we're here for. Um, so I did <laughs> just two minutes ago hand out what what um, Rachel. Emil and I um, are kind of, again, lovingly referring to as a skeletal draft. Um, and Heather, pardon me. Um, we've had, our committee has met a few times. And Anne. Yes. I'm but sorry. I missed the last. The I last one. The last one. So. Yeah. Um, and throughout last year as well has been very much brainstorming, you know, throwing our own thoughts around, but also looking at um, ends policies from other districts um, because what I heard and also I'll speak for myself 
um, was a, a need and a want to just flesh them out a little bit. Um, ours is um, short, um, a little dry, if you ask me. Um, so that's kind of how we went into it and how we went about it. Um, I'm going to stop talking for a couple of minutes and give people a chance to just glance at the skeleton. Um, you know, one of the things, do people have the, what it is now in front of them? If not, that's okay. I'm going to quickly read the current mission statement. Um, just so you can kind of uh, compare it. Um, students have the knowledge, skills, and tools to be prepared for the next stage of their lives, which justify the resources invested by the community. And that's just the RUHS, or is that the whole? No, that's the that's district. That's a district. That's us. Okay. Um, that's our end statement. Yeah, really. That each. Each school does have their own kind of personal mission statement for that school, but the, this is the district. These are the ends. Um, it's broken down into critical thinking, foundational knowledge, ability to adapt, and information technology. Um, in terms of the new one, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, and anyone join in on oh, Megan was on it last year as well. Um, I'll be the first to acknowledge it is two or three somewhat run-on sentences. We we're really trying to pack a lot in there. Um, but there was also, as I experienced it, a desire in the group to not be so curt, if you will, and dry about the mission statement, um, put more meat into it. A little more feeling, a little more, more humanity. Um, in terms of the breakdown, there are five rather than four. We were really interested in making a distinction between academics and individual foundation as a person, as a citizen, as a thinker. Um, wow, I said I was going to stop talking, and I didn't stop talking. <laughs> Who's surprised? No one. Keep going. I'm listening. It's good. <laughs> um, but what I don't want to do is prescribe the conversation because I was on the ENDS committee and you know have, have a hand in the mixer here. Um, but I do mean it as a, a jumping off point for the discussion because the committee did kind of start this work. Um, Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience, short experience in the committee? I, if not, that's okay. I mean, I can. I think what we, trying to think about a purely academic focus for someone who is really then starting adulthood and really trying to broaden that a little bit more, I think is what he was trying to say, and that's sort of this the two meetings that I went to, what our focus was is how do we, how do you set somebody up really to be a lifelong learner and engaged in society and that is as a goal of our educational system. And I think one of the tricky things in naming these things as goals is thinking about we will be asking for interpretations of them and we want them to be interpreted so that we get the information that we're looking for, right? So we can't just think about, well, this is what we want. We have to make sure that, thank you, um, that it is something that can be measured, maybe not by numbers, um, but measured and quantified. Um, which is a tricky thing when you get away from, when you're thinking of other things than academics. You know, how do we measure? What's an example? Right, I, I think we need to be careful about, about getting caught up in the measurement part because 
once we create these end policies that, that direct the administration for these outcomes, these are the outcomes we want, then they're going to use their professional expertise to say, okay, given the way education works and the data that we have and um, sort of best practices and best outcomes or the way that they can measure what we're looking for, they're gonna they're gonna he they're gonna create an interpretation for us with data and say this is this is what this is how I'm reading this this is what this means to us and this is the evidence that I'm gonna give you for that and then we can then we are gonna say is that a reasonable interpretation and does the evidence that he's providing seem to to make sense and is there a good rationale for why that's the best measurement or the best could be you know best outcome data that they have to to say yes we're meeting that or we're close to meeting that right I guess and point well taken I guess I want to edit what I said before which is we shouldn't be thinking about the measurement how it might be measured because that's not our job but really thinking about what we mean because it will be interpreted. And if we're not clear about what we mean, um, or what we, um, not that we should have our own interpretation, but I just want to be really, for personal integrity. A lot of interpretations for what that might mean. Right. Um, so I think in this group talking about what why that would even be on this list is important before it goes to someone else to figure out how they're going to measure that. So I'm going to ask some questions here for clarification on kind of what what we're hoping to get out of this tonight as a group. Because I feel like we've been off we've been given two different things here. We've got the mission statement, which is one piece. Yes. And then we have these ends items, which is another piece. So just the way. I think about breaking this down. Um, are we looking at these as two kind of like the separate entities in here and then how they correlate to each other? And then I guess what's the ask of, of us as a group tonight in this? Like what is our what is our what's the end goal that you have tonight coming out of what's the work you want us to do here? Well, that's a great question and one I also had when I um, received the information that this was going to be on the agenda tonight because there is an ends committee yeah right so I have the same question okay. I suppose I will just on the first thing that you said the committee as well treated these mm -hmm. completely separately the mission statement um, that came out of last be, before March yes. before Emil and Anne joined um, and it was several meetings, Heather, as I recall, yeah. um, talking about the mission statement and looking at different ones to come up with it. So we very much um, worked on them separately. Because I feel like, I mean, I've already written down a bunch of stuff and questions that came out of reading the mission statement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a place for us to start as a group, like looking at that. Um, yeah, I just. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Okay. So here's my first question. Great. <laughs> um, and I feel like this was something um, that Michael, you brought up when you came to, to see us, yeah. is that that there seems to be different mission statements in, in our district in each of the schools. Um, and I feel like that's something that we should look at as a board of like, do we help, is this the mission statement of the district that the board kind of sets? Do the schools each set their own mission statement? Is there, there seems to be some, in my mind, if we're like trying to look at like a unified group as a district, there should be an overarching mission statement that encompasses all of the schools. Um, and it, it shouldn't be like, you know, the school has their mission statement here and this one has it, because that's, that's just fracturing things further. Um, but I don't know if, if this is 
what it is. Like, if this is what we're writing here, what we're trying to write, like, is that the mission statement of the district? Should that come from the board? Should that come from input from the schools? Which I kind of feel like the schools should have some. Well, input. right, which is why we based it on. This. Yeah. It, it was. This is one of the things. Mm -hmm. um, I I would even say the primary thing that we mm -hmm. used as a jumping off point. So Sorry to this would you. be the district's mission statement that yes. the schools would adhere to. But the schools would kind of like not adhere to, but you know what I'm saying? That, that would represent all the schools. That's my understanding. Okay. Would be or an end so, statement. Yeah. So can I just for a quick second? So I, I will be the first to say that I am a newbie to policy governance, but I've been reading. So I think what the ends are is the board's representation of what they believe the owners are looking for the organization to produce. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you've done here is you've spelled out in a mission statement, here's, here's what we're looking for. It, administration school produce this. And by the way, your subsections, be sure to include all of these pieces within this that's what that's what we're, you can include more if you think there's more that accomplishes the mission but at a minimum you've got to include each of these and report out on each of these pieces and so you, what you're talking about is what your belief is that your owners are asking for and wanting that's your representation as a board of that and remember that's that was the impetus behind doing the portrait of the graduate. Remember we had Jackie Wilson from VSBA worked with us a couple of years ago now. And she said one of the one of the goals you should you should work and create a portrait of a graduate because it'll allow you to revisit your ends because we hadn't revisited our ends since they were first established. So we went through that ends or that portrait of a graduate process but then we get the portrait of graduate and now our job is to figure out I mean I, I, I was finding it kind of interesting looking at some of these other districts because some of them you could clearly see they just sort of took their portrait of a graduate and they just made it into their end statement but, and ours well all seven of these are in the mission mm -hmm. yeah and Impressive. and it took some work <laughs> yes it did <laughs> yeah yeah um and i mean we could keep i mean this because and then remember the other impetus was when we were working with lane he felt like we weren't being detailed enough to tell him what we wanted for the end so he that was the other thing he was like i need more detail now well, michael i don't know if this when you see this you go oh my god i need to do an ends report on this that's going to take me hours and hours and hours because remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to pick outcomes that are significant enough to move the district along but we don't want to tie them down with just you know, report writing and data collecting so that the actual work of, of getting those outcomes doesn't, isn't able, you know, he's spending all this time trying to figure out how to do all of these little Well, well but that's, I don't know. I, that's what we want, isn't it? That's the work. Uh, to work with the administration, figure out how they're going to get this done, track it, yeah, uh, report on it, and show the result. Yeah, that's and and this is vetted. I mean, we brought in community members, we brought in students, we brought in staff. Yep, and we pres we haven't yet presented it back out to the community, but I think that can be done when we say, "Hey, we've revisited our ends. Here they are." This is, you know, sort of where we're at with things. And uh, typically the next step in this is to create a strategic plan. And again, with community input, like a really, you know, well-represented cohort 
with staff members, board members, community members, students, saying how might we do this and let's actually put a plan in place to do this so we know what we're measuring. Mm -hmm. That's the That flushes this out even more. So you're saying to create effective communicators, we'll have senior project, right? We'll have eighth grade project, we'll have a fifth grade project, and this is what they'll look like, and here's the rubrics. So that it, there's a whole nother layer that could be done on this. Right, but that's not the board. The no, board's just, work, that will be your work. It might involve us as- Didn't we do that as, with Winston, though? What did we do with Winston? Wasn't that a strategic plan? Yeah, yeah but it was a but, long time ago. You're supposed to do them every five years. That was within that was the last within three years, years, at least. Oh, I don't yeah. have a copy of it. Yeah. That was definitely. Well, wasn't yeah. It? That <laughs> wasn't the greatest process. <laughs> the community felt, look, I can't speak for the entire community. I heard from several community members who were a part of it that they felt like they put a lot of time in and then it just never materialized. Mm. Well, we got like a really long thing out of that. Um, I think the, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the work that needs to be done with this is figuring out the measurability of it. Mm -hmm. And that's not our work. That's, that's not, yeah, that's not our work. That's correct. And, right. you know, I, I don't think, from where I stand, I don't think the administration is afraid of doing that work. I think. They're leaning in on that. I also think, sort of, with my under also new to policy governance as a board st structure, um, I think these are not our current ends, though. So we would have to adopt these as our ends in some in some way, um, because right now our ends don't necessarily align with the portrait of a graduate. So yes, this is the work for the administration to do, but my understanding is the board's work to us either pick these as our ends, right. change change our ends to these, or change our ends to include these. Yeah, I, I'm hearing that. Because on an evaluation process, we need to have a clear, we need to give a clear uh, you know, expectation for what the evaluation will be, not, but not implement our academic, well, we don't have academic expertise in achieving these, so um, that's kind of where the gray area is. I think it's kind of shared work, but. I wonder if, um, Going back to something Katya brought up um, about why this is a topic tonight, um, if someone wanted to speak on maybe what they were hoping to, to get out of having it as a topic at our retreat, um, when, when there is a committee, do we want to disband the committee? As a member of the committee, if, if, if it's time for it to be board work, mm, you know, I, I, I won't feel broken up with if um, we decide that the committee work is done because we kind of got into the weeds and came up with something. Mm -hmm. um, if it's time to disband and this is, you know, the new ends committee, the board is now taking it on. I'm just wondering about the impetus for, for wanting it here tonight. But I, the, the, the reason in the last meeting, the, the mission statement, we were supposed to be looking at the mission statement, but the mission statement wasn't there. So then we moved it to this meeting to look at the mission statement. You mean that was on the agenda? Yeah. To look at well, the was, was the committee was going to report out and there was going to be a copy of the mission statement. That's what, at least that's how I interpreted the, because I was running that meeting and that was on the agenda was to report out, but there was no report out because there wasn't a mission statement for the board to look at. And mm -hmm. it was, that was on the agenda was to look at the. So it was a tabled item from last meeting? Yes. 
Yeah. So it was a committee report. And then, and then I brought up we could we could look at the mission statement during our retreat because that's a time when we have time to kind of flesh out and think about what we want to have for a mission statement. And we had one, so it's a time for everybody to weigh in on the mission statement. So that's so I put it on there. And I mean we we have a new superintendent if we want to update our ends we need to get on it and get it done so he knows what to work toward for outcomes or you know or because right now the the if probably as you're going in and you're looking at things things are lined up for the ends and the interpretation from the previous superintendent what I spent the time a little bit this week looking at was knowing that this was the meeting, looking yeah. at the interpretations and the reports from each of the areas that uh, that Lane did, and to right. say, okay, this is telling me where we are towards these ends and goals that that you were looking for, and what do we what do we need to do with it? Um, you know, I think that I think that you're pretty take is you're pretty clear on your portrait of a graduate you've you looks like you've adopted that and that you're moving forward and that that's a piece that you're wanting that the community wants and is, is behind to the extent that they know it exists and whatnot um, it, it was great I was at best with the cabinet and I took a shot at can you even tell me what the portrait of a graduate is and between the cabinet every single area got named <laughs> so that was really great I'm not sure any one person could name all of the areas but together as a cabinet they were moving in that direction which I think is great because the portrait of the graduate work isn't just a high school thing it starts pre-k mm -hmm. right and away it goes because everything's building to to get there so uh, it was the first thing that's what I was whispering to Heather about when we were looking at the, mm -hmm. at the document you provided because Heather is much more familiar with the portrait of a graduate. My question was, does it hit every area that's in the portrait of the graduate? Is anything missing? There's not. She says it's all hitting. Uh, there's a section here where I think there's three things that are lumped together in the portrait of the graduate work, mm -hmm. um, split out specifically. I think that means that as a board, if you leave it split out, you're saying, we want you to be even more specific about these mm -hmm. areas, right? So I think that what you're doing is the mission statement that you're that you're using here is a really long mission statement. I like it much better as an end statement, not as a mission statement. But if this mm -hmm. ends up being the mission, uh, you know, I think I may have done for you as a board. I can remember back to when I was a principal, uh, which was now I finished being a principal ten years ago, and, and I did that for six years. So we developed the mission in the first year. It was to ensure that all students were informed, literate, critical thinkers who demonstrate responsible social and civic behaviors. And then most recently in the, in the islands, uh, we ensured that all members of the GISU learning community are curious, creative, courageous, and capable of pursuing their aspirations in a diverse and ever-changing world. So I can roll something from 16 years ago off in this meeting I could for multiple years go into the building and say this is what we're in business for this is this is what our mission is um, and then we had pieces much like the the areas that you're looking at underneath it and then spelled out and it's probably what my work is here and to work with the principals to how are you going to spell these areas out with me and then come back to the board and say hey this is how we this is how we made progress in those in those areas so um, Right now, the mission statement is a really, it seems like a solid end statement to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that it rolls right off the tongue, but maybe with a little bit of work, I can get there and roll it off the tongue within a month. There were two other iterations of it, right? We tried some shorter ones yeah. and um, ultimately put this one out as in the skeletal draft. Um, because it had everything in there that we wanted in there, Yeah. right? I'm sure there, like I said, it's it's a run-on sentence. I think that's a really important thing in your in your end. You want everything absolutely there. Mm -hmm. I think so. I haven't exactly figured out how the ends are going to fold in, 
what you want, what I think you want in a mission statement is something that people remember and they know, mm -hmm. and they know every piece of it. So that when you're sitting there saying, why are we doing this work? You know, how is this helping kids be curious or creative or courageous or capable? And you notice I said GISU learning community. So how did we help parents do those things? Because they're part of our learning community. How did we help teachers, support staff? Everybody was working towards that in, in that particular place. But I think the other piece that I'm really kind of keying in on is making sure that I understand who your owners are. Um, because I think that it does matter who, who the board sees as its owners in a policy governance uh, framework. So there's a whole lot in there. So, yes. Um, I'm like ownership linkage. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if anyone just wants to answer that, like a like a quiz kind of question, I'm, I'm I open mean, to I, that. Yeah, I I think just listening to the conversation. I mean, I I like the listen, thinking of this as an ends statement rather than the mission statement. To me, does make sense mm -hmm. um, because you have been able to incorporate a lot, you know, from this portrait of a graduate piece in there, and then potentially working from the board and the school level to come up with a, a concise district mission statement. I feel like that's a separate piece from this. That that feels more, I don't know, natural, I think. Um, so, and I think that that helps us as a board to zero in a bit more on like, okay, this is our end statement, this is what we're, and then that mission statement piece can be reflective of this, but can be separate from this. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? That's how I like that's what it's kind of hearing flows better. That does make sense. I think what I want to remember is kind of the the really important work that, as Anne said, you know, we got to get on it. We we have been getting on it um, based on this, and and what I don't want to do is something that I am always ready to do, which is get caught up in semantics. So I think. I agree with you, but I'm not, I don't think that has to happen here necessarily, although we can brainstorm. I'm not, if, if someone wants to disagree with me, I'm fine with that. My concern is that Michael have, as early as possible, what he needs to base his, to guide his entire academic year. I mean, it sounds, it seems like you guys have been able to flush out more this is more expansive than what we've had in the past yes yeah yeah <clears throat> i'd like to possibly propose that 1.4 start with the word wellness in vermont the word wellness when capitalized is recognized by the aoe to include physical education and health programming and I think that um, I can see every educator in the district in here, except for I'm struggling a little to see our physical education teachers. And I want every teacher to look at this and say, that's where I'm listed. <laughs> I, I see myself reflected. I, I could, because sometimes we'll say, what data can you bring to the end statements, right? We'll, we'll ask our educators. And I want, I, that was just a, a small recommendation for the order of the words in the phrase. So wellness, comma, personal integrity, and responsibility. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> really easy. Yeah, Ryan, you're great. <laughs> I guess, I guess while, we're, while we're talking about words, the yep. only thing that like struck, that stuck out to me in, in your, I'm going to change the end statement. End statement. Yeah. statement. Yeah, Was sure. the end word statement. healthy. Um, oh, is healthy not there? It is. I don't know. I kind of like... I guess my question would be, how are we measuring? Like, well, how do you measure health? So in that we, I think the way? good news for you is you don't have to worry about that so much <laughs> to start with. I have to tell you how I interpret that you want wellness or healthy measured. And then you get to take that as your jumping off point, I think, and say, we'd like you to do more with this or less with that, or you're not headed at all in the right direction. 
But an example might be the youth risk behavior data, right? We might make improvements in that. Mm -hmm. So our numbers of students who report vaping might go down, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But there could be, but as a board, as Michael's saying, you could ask us for something different or something more. And if I can't do it, then I need to come back to you, I think, and say, I, I, I'm going to need this, this, and this in order to be able to do this. Or, you know, I, I think that opens, I think that my interpretation probably is designed to open a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not bad for you to say, well, you didn't really capture what we're looking for, Mike, here. We were really thinking more along this line. And it actually gives you all a chance to figure out what makes what makes sense for, again, I'm going to come back to your owners, for your owners and what you're, what you're looking at there. How do you represent them? There are other things in here that are maybe even more ambiguous than the term healthy, like mm -hmm. culture of care. Yeah. Are we hoping our students show that they care? Are they empathetic people? Are they not apathetic people? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. What do we What do we want from a culture of care? What is that? Um, so that that could be something that we could tighten up, maybe. Like I th I think I know what a culture of care is, but I'm bringing all my biases and all my experiences to what that means. So what do you think we could put, because one leads into the other, right? So I'm trying to also hearken back to many meetings ago, the committee meetings, everything in the end statement um, should also be reflected in the 1.1 through 1.5, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So. Why? I'm curious. Because this is our end statement and these are our end policies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can't, they can't make and somehow be. Yeah. And I'm looking at what we had done before. These are the things we want measured in order to get this. So think about what we had before. We had students have the knowledge, skills, and tools to be prepared for the next stage of their lives, which justify the resources invested by the community. And then it said further, our core focus is on the following, and then it started listing some, you know, 1.1 critical thinking. Right, so, but that's mission statement, not end statement. So I'm jumping on the well, copy this of bandwagon the, This here. is the end, this is our end statement from before, which this we're trying to create, are we not trying to create another end statement? Or are we, that's that the, we'll that's go That's also with the mission the, statement, though. Well, mission ends, it's, it, it was, it's the same thing. These were the ends for the district. Yeah, you know, we were just talking about, well, I mean, that, that's kind of what we were just saying, is that this, this reads more of the work that the board and leadership are engaged in, and a, a district mission statement, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how, maybe I'm just not explaining that right. A district, like, that to me feels different. Like, this, this feels more, um, and I think they're spelled out differently yeah. Yeah. in that and policy I governance think, book. Yeah, two and I think things. that's where we're, we're getting a little confusion because basically, I was, when I was looking at a couple of things, what do they say? Here somewhere. Basically, in policy governance, you don't have, you don't have a mission statement. You have an end statement. Um, you can have that feeling language. What did, where did they say can you, that? Can you summarize what the so, I was just feeling? looking for my book and I, I didn't bring it. But my understanding is that your end statement, like that's the, that's the goal of, for Go, work. That's the goal of the governance, right? That's your, from your governing towards that goal, towards that end. And we're asking the superintendent and district leadership to oh, to answer to us on that. And a mission statement is really more about the the direction of the school specifically, or the district. That I'm I'm not saying that correctly now, but 
Okay, so so is the mission statement even ours to do? That's where I, I don't, feel. I don't think not. it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think it's. Yeah. I think potentially there's some collaboration based on what we come out of here. Mm -hmm. This can be guidance, but that to me feels like that comes from mm -hmm. the schools mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. you, you sure and better that's be able a unified to statement. Right. Not like Braintree has it, and Brookfield has it, and RU has it, and that's something that unifies the district, and all the schools feel like they've been a part of that. Hmm. But but this, what we're writing here, should guide that there should be some similarities then. Well, that I, too, right? I would bet that, or, or I would hope, since we've been working toward these ends here, that that all the the cabinet knew what the ends were that they were working toward because there was a whole yep. planning process to to meet the interpretation that Lane had for these old ends and now what what we're working on is a new one and and I think part of what and I'm just going to read on I think this is the section of the book that you're referring to where um, it says, board, mem board members may find themselves wondering how to express the philosophy, beliefs, and overall vision that lie behind their ends policies, or indeed everything the board does and doesn't do. The answer is to keep beliefs and philosophy out of ends policies, which should be confined to instructions to your CEO or superintendent about what benefits you require to be made for for whom and with what cost efficiency, and put the beliefs and values um, in governance process policies as foundational statements of your board's commitment. Examples of such statements include, we believe that all human beings should be treated with dignity, we are commuted, committed to a world that works for everyone. Um, so I feel like in this moment, it sounds like the work of our board is to do this, come up with our ends statement and these pieces that you've already fleshed out and then say here, this is our ends, you know, go to it with this and then also direct our superintendent to work with the schools to come up with a mission statement in which this is a guiding document. And then, then we step out, like we do this, yeah. we step out. And yeah. they do he that can, the yeah, they can decide if they want to do a mission. Because the schools might want to stay with the mission statements they already have. I think, yes, they might. But I think, again, when we're, when we're working as a board to help bring unification amongst all the schools and be this unified district, having different, having ones. different ones doesn't do that. Mm. It should be a unified one. And I think that there's a way to come up with a mission across the district that speaks to our elementary schools and our high school in a way that's unifying. But again, this is something that we've seen time and again. There's something happening different in each school and we, we wanna really make sure that that's, everyone's feeling a part of the district and that they have this mm -hmm. one thing that unifies them. It's not gonna yeah. happen if each school has a different mission statement. Yeah, I wonder how much, I don't know the answer, but I've, I don't think I knew the mission of the elementary But I think that's great work to be done and not work that we as a board need to do. Great. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so do we need to uh, come up with this in statement tonight? Do we need to finalize this? Um, there, I, I mean, there's no requirement, no. Oh, but I nice. think, well, I think there have been some things floated around, you know, edits and flip-flops and capitalizations and things like that. And I think that um, either one person from the committee or the committee as a whole can make those edits and then we actually voted in mm -hmm. in August, which mm -hmm. I, I think would be nice timing actually yeah. because... Do we have to have two readings? Oh, yeah. do we have to have two readings? And this isn't the first? No, because it's not the final document. Or it's not the document that we're presenting to the board as the. Sorry, it's going to be this. Sure. It's not on the agenda, though. In that way. Say that again. I don't think it was intended to be a, the final version. Final version. 
So then, still great timing though, a first reading in August. Um, in it, I know this is a public meeting, but you know, gearing up and people are actually thinking about school and mm -hmm. hopefully attending. And um, so a first read there, and then a maybe second read and vote. Well, not maybe second read. Yes, a second read and maybe a vote in um, September. Just uh, FYI, mm -hmm. we compel all our educators to align their professional goals to the ends, at least one of their goals. Mm -hmm. These, yeah. It shouldn't be surprising. I mean, no, it shouldn't, these it shouldn't really alter no, lesson plans. I, I don't think they will, but I just wanted you to know that. So um, maybe we'd put it in front of them as a draft. Oh, they see it? Oh, so yeah, do our is, first read in August and then provide it yeah, it could be as a draft. draft. Okay. Uh, it's in the first. Yeah. The first read will be in the packet, mm -hmm. which is public. Mm -hmm. um, Great, it's all public. So no, and all I just distributed this at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Um, so maybe one thing we could do is just see if there, if we do want to tie these policies to everything that's in the end statement. Are there anything? Is there anything that's missing here that we should, whether it be the ends committee works to fill in before the August meeting or we work on it now doesn't matter to me but um, are there things missing here that we can't tie to these 1.135 1 in the end statement correct This is the end statement that we're proposing to go with. This one that's called mission statement. Yeah. Well, you'd need to edit out the word our mission to be, I guess, yeah. our, our end. aim. Our aim or our ends, yeah. Or our, our ends, can it be ends mission? We aim. We aim. Each yeah. of you were, but oh boy! And you, well, I she's been, been. Have you been doing a good? Because I you've been doing an excellent job. I've been watching <laughs> over your shoulder. Okay. Because okay. um, well, I haven't been. Yeah. I've been. Because I didn't take good thinking. enough notes at the last meeting, <laughs> and I don't remember why we landed here. Needs here. to be cleaned up. I, I yeah. Well, I'm have, struggling we, with how we, long, we, and it's not really following a real ends. Well, there's format. two, but there's two different things here. Like, you read the mission statement, and uh, maybe I'm mis maybe I'm misreading it, but you read the mission statement, and then and then these one through fives are the ends. Like this piece is just kind of like the global look, and then we're looking. Right? Is that yeah. This is the overview. Yeah. This is more like yeah. the checklist. This is the, the narrative and yeah. the list. <laughs> Thank like, you. That whole thing should be wordsmith. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Reading that right now. Um, if there's big, yes. If people have things right now, Rachel just said, I'll take credit for it. Yeah, do it. So I think. No, Rachel just said some wordsmithing is definitely needed. I think we're all in agreement there. It's mm -hmm. it's clunky. Um, if there are things people want to suggest right now, great. If you have further thoughts, please feel free to email me. I am on the committee. Emil is on the committee, Anne and Rachel. So, <coughs> and Heather. Right. Heather's ahead. been on it. Although I think, I think I, I, I wasn't at the last meeting. Um, I apologize, but I was on quite a few meetings prior to yeah. that. And we might want to have Michael on, you know. Are we yeah. doing this now or? Are we I do, wait, wait. Now I think we're trying to do too many things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have on this agenda item 20 more minutes. If we want to use those 20, 19 minutes to do some wordsmithing, great. Okay, I'll go first. 
Great. Um, I would take out as at OSSD, and I would say as the OSSD board, we aim to cultivate lifelong learners. There. Um, Hang on. As the O. We cultivate. We do it. Yeah, um, I, I think we can take out the board piece. I don't think we have to self-reference there. Sorry, I'm just talking over so you. So at OSSD, we cultivate? Yeah. I like it. Aim to. No, take out the aim. So that this is what we should be doing. Don't let aim. me cough out. Don't let me just aim. If I don't true, succeed, yeah. I didn't okay. succeed. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. Um, Keep going, Katya. Uh, no, that's kind of where I ended. And then I was, I was gonna say, I would just put a period after um, an effective communicators, and then again to empower students, or just some break that up somehow. We right? empower students to be resilient. Yeah. Okay, so perfect. We empower students. I'm still the, students the are healthy Students empowered word. to be. I'm not liking mm, that. That's just go. me. Say that again, Michael. So, yeah, so you yeah. can break it here. You're gonna say. Uh, we cultivate lifelong learners who are creative problem solvers, critical thinkers, and effective communicators, period. And then students mm -hmm. are empowered mm -hmm. to be resilient, healthy, and self-directed individuals who foster a culture of care. I think we should leave that part out because it doesn't fit. Doesn't fit in that lot. Like that doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't match. Yeah. Right there. So self-directed individuals. Period. We foster a culture of care. Somewhere you should get in the community member. And this culture of care piece. We um. Is this where we're kind of bringing in the uh, caring, connected yep. community member? I think it was trying to sum that up. Well, because yeah. I was just switching. I type faster than I write. One thing that I felt was maybe missing from this was that element of the environment or nature especially yeah. since i know at least brookfield has such a high mm -hmm. strong focus on being at least a preschool a nature-based preschool so i'm not sure if that's something we want to include some language that's explicitly about nurturing the environment or stewardship or something along those lines do you right. feel like 1.5 doesn't Oh, I know. I feel like um, community engagement, global citizenship. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I meant more in the. How is that being reflected in that? Yeah. In right. the end statement. Got yeah, it. in the end statement. You know, one point one through one point five. Yeah, but just do we want to include explicit language about stewarding the environment or something about nature along those lines? And while I'm not opposed to it, mm -hmm. stewarding the environment. I think um, my thought about wordsmithing this is taking things out and not adding. Mm -hmm. And I, well, yeah. Well, I you know, maybe right away is it, is it um, something that could replace that element of culture of care that is so nebulous and abstract? Right. Or do you get the culture? So I, I, I wonder if you go with a period after self-directed individuals mm -hmm. and then your next sentence starts we inspire a generation of citizens who embrace challenges a culture of care innovation and positively impact our society great and then you get the stewardship specifically down in the in the more directed, more specific area that you want to see something there, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So Ryan, with the phrase culture of care, we're trying to capture everything in this caring, connected community member, which includes sustainability of the environment. Yeah. And so it took us a long time to come up with two words to cover all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you get it. Uh, that's, 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 but yeah. this is a good proposal, but if you have another like two words that you think <laughs> encapsulates all that, Culture Now's care. the time. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you can bring it home with we invest the entrusted community resources to maximize each individual's potential. Is that on there? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. You, you're catching this, Amiel? Mm -hmm. Thank I you. I think the, the 
And when I see the next version of it, citizens. right, I bet I can build stewardship into it. I think I missed something. something. Yeah. I got something. The culture of cares. It, well, I have it over here in brackets because we're. Michael, can you again what you were thinking with? We inspire a generation. Yep, we inspire a generation of citizens who embrace challenges, comma, a culture of no, care. No, I think challenges and innovations go together, and the comma comes after innovations. Embrace challenges and innovations, comma, comma a culture of care. Culture of care. And positively impact our society. Yeah. We invest the interest of community resources to maximize these. Emil, do you mind reading all that you have written? I out? don't mind reading it at all. Thank you. Um, at OSSD, we cultivate lifelong learners who are creative problem solvers, critical thinkers, and effective communicators. Students are empowered to be resilient, healthy, and self-directed. We inspire a generation of citizens who embrace challenges and innovations, a culture of care, and positively impact our society. We invest the entrusted community resources to maximize each individual's potential. A, that know. sentence we were just yeah. working on is tricky because there are three things in there. Embrace something, positively impact something, and then a culture of care. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. um, grammatically... Yeah. Incongruent. So you're saying it you. needs to be participate <laughs> in or something like that. Right, right. yes, a verb in, engage, about the culture, engage of care. In a culture of care. What if we said engage. embrace challenges, engage. comma, innovations, comma, and a culture of care? Right, so then you have one verb covering three concepts mm -hmm. to yeah. positively impact our society. No, still, we, we need a verb with culture of care. What are they doing with it? We always no, we're putting it in the list. Of yeah, we're putting it in okay. the things we're embracing. Embracing three things. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> in, order then, to, in order to positively impact our society. Thank you. Uh -huh. Just, thank you for pointing that out. It would have been really clunky and awkward. And Later. That's one of my problems with our old one is it's clunky and awkward. Maybe so, it'll be clunky and awkward. So let me, I'll read Sorry. that again. Thank you. Um, we inspire a generation of citizens who embrace challenges, innovation, and a culture of care to positively impact our society. It sounds did like a throwaway anything? sentence. Yeah, did we, lose it, we did. We lost the intent of all of it. <laughs> Not the whole thing, that sentence. Um, it doesn't feel right. So. Um, generation of students who embrace challenges. Whiteboard. There is a whiteboard. I know who's got handwriting. Embrace challenges, innovation. Oh, right. Do you want me to write it up there? Yeah. Can you write it up sure. there? So we can. I'm a vision. I only have a pen. Do you have a marker? I don't. Such a visual so person. Uh, Tom, do you have a marker? Oh, so. there might be one in the basket. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I see. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, did you see? Yes, we know why ELA is number one. <laughs> 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 are we effective communicators right now? May I borrow your laptop for a minute? Yeah. Like this, this, these have to go to embrace challenges and innovation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and engagement, culture of care. Oh, okay. Positive and impact. <laughs> <laughs> it's very wobbly. We all are sometimes. We all are wobbly. I think the reason it doesn't work is the, re the that foster a culture of care really goes with healthy, resilient, mm. healthy, and self-directed. I see that, yeah. 
like that there's a synergy between those two mm -hmm. phrases. Mm -hmm. Yep. Four. No, though, does the culture of care positively impact our society? That Heather and I just spent a whole week down in Killington at the Best Conference where yeah. that, that was, that, that is the, a culture of care to building a culture of care to positively impact. Yeah, yeah if we said like, we so aim to inspire a generation of citizens who embrace challenges and innovation and engage in a culture of care to positively impact our society. That works. It has a verb. And engage, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think this counts as a first reading. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like after all this work. First reading. <laughs> after all this yeah, reading. Yeah. This is probably more than you guys typically it's read any. This I is a long read. I, I appreciate you reading this out. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> such a visual. This helps me. How are your arms doing there? We can always, like, okay, this is where we just change something. Like, we inspire the generation. Oh, quiet down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she do you want something to change? Oh, do you want me to say what Somebody I said? Yeah. Um, we aim to inspire. Not just we inspire? <laughs> oh. Do we not want to aim? Sorry. No, we don't, right. don't, don't want to aim. hope we can, maybe. It might happen. We inspire a generation of citizens. Sorry, so reading the old one. Um, who embrace challenges and innovation. <clears throat> and engage in a culture of care to positively impact our society. Um, <clears throat> minor suggestion, do we want to change engage to be a more active verb like Build, cultivate, steward, and something like that, where they're the ones who are, you know, not just engaging in this thing that exists, but bringing that culture of care. Like contribute. It. Yeah. So you, some of your ideas were steward. I mean, I, I don't want to. But what about and foster? Foster. Cultivate like we had foster. We had foster. Oh, you're right. I don't want to utilize well, words that we've already Well, we got used. rid of that. We, we got rid of it so we could maybe add it back in, don't we? All good. Thank you. Good job, you two. I'm going to stand up here to make changes as we go. Okay. Uh, what was your thought on the cultivate towards the end? Well, we got cultivate already. You said foster. What about foster? <clears throat> okay, cult and foster, foster culture. Cultivate might that? not be the best word for the first sentence because think of your the the many you know people who might be an audience. Like I don't know. I feel like we should have you the end statement. The the first action verb should be. It's on learners, right? And I tend to use cultivate more for like something I'm growing. Right, like in, in an animate thing, right? Not a yes. sentient thing. Yes, right. Um, so uh, maybe we could move cultivate to the, the care and put a different verb at the beginning. Right. If you take cult, if you swap out engage with cultivate, you also get a little bit of alliteration <laughs> there. That sounds nice. And cultivate a culture of care. Yeah. And so you're saying engage lifelong learners? No, yeah. No, no, no. What if Foster? we create? Nurture? Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so you really fail. Okay, so engage goes, and that's cultivate. Yeah. Nurture. Nurture Or empower. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we have empowered here. Yeah, but we don't want to use it. Yeah, we don't want to use it too much. What about encourage? I want something more aggressive. Um, so can we, the students are empowered. That's a, that's a good one there. Um, yeah. Can someone who's thesaurus the, call? Say, who's got the yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up synonyms for nurture. Or empower. Look up synonyms for empower. What did you say, Rachel? We're looking for a replacement for cultivate. For yeah. Cultivate. Unfortunately, cultivate has a lot of agricultural synonyms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man, the thing with empower, it has like a lot of kind of permissive things. Like we entitle, we permit. Mm. That's not mm. right. Okay. We, we, I'm going to call it five minutes we have. Um, so once we find this word, I'm going to take a picture of this. Um, and inspire. Inspire. We grow it. I really, I really like nurture there. I do too. I mean, if you want I, it to be less. I don't know. But we, we, we. Mm -hmm. That still goes That's, with the. It's a little too soft for me. Like we make them, right? It's too we woo. produce them. It's a little woo woo for oh, me. Man. Yeah. All right. It sounds very mothering. What about encur well, encourage? Encourage is maybe produce. a little. Produce. <laughs> we really, we well, really, really went to the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we went from wood we to fertilize. <laughs> and you went from, I went from beginning the growth to storage. <laughs> <laughs> How about just we birth? That's aggressive. Our system. Changing my job in a big way. <laughs> the manufacturer. Reasonable interpretation. <laughs> Generate fabric. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like how it's like fire in sight. Oh, in sight. <laughs> doesn't have political meanings <laughs> at all. Coax, create, press, create, pressure. <laughs> how is that different than produce? I just it's not. It's, it's, just, just, it's more creative. It just feels less production like. <laughs> Develop. 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 People develop. Uh, oh, develop. That's good. Like develop. Can I write it down and see how we feel? <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Put it in the green. Yeah. <laughs> or prepare. Oh, yeah. I got both of these yeah. off the portrait of the graduate, oh. by the way, because I'm looking for because nice. this was such yeah. a boil down of all the good yeah. words. We worked so hard to boil down words. I figured they'd have to be. Develop. Okay. Because that feels like it works it with yeah. a long yeah. way Develop. rather than just preparing and. Good point. Look at us. <laughs> like a lot of teamwork <laughs> going on here. Um, two minutes. Okay. All right, take a picture. Let's take great. two minutes. <laughs> I think the only thing that's not. Oh, yeah, it's changed all over. That. Um, isn't clearly identified down below as creative problem solvers, but maybe that doesn't need to be. Well, critical thinking, communication. All right, fair enough. So. Responsibility. A lot of the creative problem solver um, bullets speak directly to scientific process. So you will get your science data. But you're thinking we need to use the phrase problem solver? Get it in there, Sam? No, no, no. No, no he's, he's saying, saying on the down below. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's science, man. Cool. Like when you look at it, like makes predictions, conducts experiments, collects data, right? Yeah. That's, um, this. I hope everyone agrees, but this has been a really nice hour of work. I just want to yes. let's give ourselves yeah, a back. Up, back. Up, 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 up. Um, so again, the, so are we considering this a first read, or this was just a working um, hour? Yeah. 
first reading. Yeah, August. I feel like for to, August. to stick to our open so meeting the, law. So the right. staff can get a draft. Yeah. That should be submitted again. So will we have a, a yeah, that felt really meeting good. before <laughs> August to flesh out the rest of the stuff? Or are we good with these? Bulleted thing. Uh, except for we um, we did have a, a request to put wellness first. Yeah. First. So, okay. I think we probably just good. take personal integrity out and yeah. capitalize wellness, um, wellness and responsibility. I can't even remember what we meant by personal integrity. I yeah, don't know. Personal, yeah. personal integrity. But. You know, well, yeah. Let's just remove personal integrity. <clears throat> take that out. How do you measure that? <laughs> I don't know. Integrity is used of quite a few yeah, I would times I would, throughout I would this. It. Just switch the wellness to that first. Wellness, comma, personal integrity. And personal integrity. Com yeah, yeah like a that, comma that's... rather than a slash. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because okay. they're very different things. All right, Ben's check. Board's working structure. Okay, great. <laughs> Board, job, thank you. Here we are. Board working mm -hmm. structure. Okay. Um, in the agenda meeting, um, Michael did what he just did for us, which was... Um, uh, come up with three words, and I think I gave you six words to do it, but you came up with three yeah. for this agenda item. Um, because I was a little lost, again, like the first one, not why it's on here, but what people hoped <laughs> the end result to be, what people want this conversation to be. Is it why we are a policy governance board? Is it, do we function correctly as a policy governance board? Is it, because um, I heard different things from different people while we're talking about the structure in which we work. I, well, I don't know, I didn't write a lot down. <laughs> right, when you have no working memory, you have to use what you got. You're looking at notes from the last, mm -hmm. from my, like, because we didn't up, have no no. no, I brought it up and the board didn't want to talk about it. <clears throat> well, I shouldn't say that. The only one who spoke up was Rachel, and Rachel said, I don't think we need to talk about it. And no one else really said, we want to talk about it. But then during the agenda meeting, we... You know, it has been an issue that's come up several times. Is I haven't actually how do we? <laughs> so I think what Rachel, yes, I remember this now. And Rachel said, I think that we don't that we don't need to switch from policy governance, but that we need to figure out how to make it work for us. Yeah, I think is is. Does that sound right, Rachel? Yes, it does. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Thank you. That was actually a very good memory. That's how I remember it, too. Yeah. You made it sound more elegant than I did. <laughs> well, that's how I heard it. So I think that's why I, I crossed it off, because I think then it was sort of a discussion about then do we, you know, is the discussion then how do we make this work for us, or is or do we not need to discuss it, and we need to really just kind of dig our teeth into working as you know, working with policy governance as our board practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, it seems like getting the ends fleshed out like you have and working on that mission statement will be things that will benefit us as a board in understanding what our role is and the information that's brought back to us from the superintendent based on the ends and the EL, EL reports and all that. that so the EL reports, right? Th this is something that I have trouble with in policy governance. I'm going to get touchy-feely now and just talk about how I feel about policy governance. But <laughs> I don't think we need to move away from it either. My biggest challenge is feeling like we come to a meeting, we read a report, it is a reasonable interpretation of the policy, there's evidence there. I can go to the district and read through the evidence if it's not in the packet. We accept it. We move on. We never talk about it again until the next time it comes up. And it feels very, I know that policy governance means that we're, it's, it's kind of hands off um, in terms of the, the operations, but it has felt to me too hands off, too rubber stamp 
too um, detached mm -hmm. from what's going on. Now, is that a problem in the policy? Is that where my problem is? Is my, or my challenge? Is my challenge in liking it um, the specific reports we've been getting? Maybe I just didn't feel like I was necessarily getting what I wanted from Lane. I, I don't know. All I know is I have felt caged in and restricted by policy governance because in keeping in line with it, it keeps me feeling beyond out of the operations of things and actually so far detached that the community sees us as detached. Mm -hmm. And I think that the biggest, one of the biggest struggles we have as a district is confidence from our ownership. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the answer, but I do know that, that con the, the lack of confidence has partially to do with feeling like we are, as a board, disconnected. And I don't want to blame policy governance, but for me, that's what makes me feel disconnected. Um, yeah, those are my feelings. Thank you for listening. Hannah, yeah, is part of what you're saying is the board meeting is an opportunity for you to get information and to share information with your owners and you're looking for that information perhaps in a different way than a report that is the interpretation of a specific end. So you want it, you want that information in a way that's more community friendly. I want the information in a way that while it may be coming from one individual, mm -hmm. it doesn't it isn't that individual's information. It doesn't feel like it's just that individual's information. Um, right. And I think that's also the perception of the community. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, the, the board speaks as one, so I don't engage necessarily in, in as, as, in my identity as a board member with community members about the district. Um, and I, I have no problem with that, but it feels like there's no opportunity to do that. Also with the staff, there's no opportunity to do that. It's very closed off. Um, so th there's gotta be a way to feel like the EL reports are not um, a funnel which is what they feel like. We are getting information. The information definitely is coming from all sorts. The funnel is big at the top, mm -hmm. but we get it a, a pinprick, and the community sees us getting it in a pinprick, um, which can lead, and I think has, to a perception of us having a very narrow concept of what's going on. I think one of the things that Lane didn't do well was bring other people in to speak with him on topics. Hmm. Like every year when he did finance, he never brought Robin Pembroke to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, when like there were topics that would come up that it would have been good to bring the expert, like, and that wasn't <clears throat> happening. And that I think gives a more robust feel to the information. Like if the superintendent occasionally appoints a designee who's more of an expert on a topic to present on it. Like I think when you guys brought the principals back into the meetings that made a really good mm -hmm. feeling shift. And so without moving away from the governance model, I think you could sort of widen the funnel as it were. So it feels like more robust information. Well, and I think that those people, like you said, then also feel ownership over their area of expertise. Sure. Um, and that they can contribute 
in a way that maybe they haven't been able to. Yeah, it goes both ways. I think the principals have really enjoyed having the opportunity. Like you see their enthusiasm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it's great for us to then have that interaction with them because we don't typically have. Well, and I wonder if it's possible to occasionally have a teacher come in and do that. Yes. I mean, I think the 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 way that the governance structure is structured, um, there's kind of a we don't. It, it's almost hierarchical, mm -hmm. which feels really yucky. Mm. Um, you're always <clears throat> presenting in front of your boss, which is. You know, I could feel that tension a little bit sometimes. I think where. He, we've asked someone to come in and give a report on their school, but they also want to give a report that may be in the best interest of the administration. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, there, there is that hierarchical tension, but I don't know that you can get fully get rid of that. And I'm not saying that yeah. will exist under Michael, but um, yeah. There, it would, it would be hard to move away with that with <clears throat> whatever governance structure we we have because my understanding of the school board is it is intended to keep the superintendent accountable mm -hmm. and so yes it is hierarchical but perhaps by design and right i mean there's <laughs> always there's always power dynamics in the room right if if a staff member comes in to present there are power dynamics in the room. Mm -hmm. the, someone's sign and someone's paycheck. And to ignore that fact or pretend it doesn't exist is atrociously irresponsible. Um, but I don't think it has to go so far as to feel like a conversation can't take place. The first presentation we had when we brought that back to, the, to a regular meeting was, as I remember it, Melinda at RES downstairs and not only did she do the presentation but we got into a not sunshiny conversation afterwards not that it was tense but it was not sunshiny topic you know about behaviors and mm -hmm. and the the in uh, uh, dissatisfaction of staff um, that I thought was more not productive but transparent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but then it turned in again to presentations. I don't have a problem with presentations. Again, Patty gave hers and I want to go to her school. <laughs> um, but I do think we need to work to make it more of a conversation. Mm -hmm. The power dynamic is there, but they also, there's also a power dynamic, but they know a hell of a lot more about what they're doing than we do. Right. Yeah. They're the experts at what they're doing. And I think we can do a better job. <clears throat> is this about policy governance? It is, because I, I just feel this shadow of it all the time hmm. that I'm not supposed to talk to staff or hmm. you know, well, any information. You can stop you can talk to staff, just not as a board member and not about Michael. But you can talk to you can talk yeah. to staff. Even in a board <laughs> meeting though, it's it's very presentation mm. compliment. Maybe a question about one slide. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's, there's. So is the, is the question then? How do we encourage those more transparent conversations um, and get away from the more? Because you know the three presentations that we had with the principals, they were lovely, but they were also like very, just overtly positive. They were lauding, right? Which isn't very productive. It's great to be like, hey, I know a bunch of good things that these schools are doing. But it sounds to me like those transparent conversations are more productive in that we can then say, superintendent, what are you doing about this? Mm -hmm. uh, this problem that arose that we became aware of. So is the question then, how do we utilize policy governance to encourage those things? Those transparent conversations? Mm -hmm. Or encourage them to, to, to bring, you know, we want to hear the positives, but we also want you to bring to this. Bring your pain points. Yeah, bring a challenge. What, what is challenging you? 
We've heard what you, what you feel like you're excelling at. What are some challenges that you're facing? We can encourage them maybe to have, to bring that to the, to those presentations. The, the roses and thorns presentation yeah. to the school board. Yeah. Pro com pro. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, I like the idea of being, of having uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I think we also put ourselves, if we're saying bring your challenge points and we're not in a position to take action, mm -hmm. we are going to look bad. Mm -hmm. Because the action has to come from the people who have the expertise in the action and the tools at their fingertips. They've got the money, they've got the, they've got the instructions. They're the experts. So if people come to us with their problems, I mean, we are way up here on a level of like addressing people's problems. We are not in the weeds with them. And if they come to us with their problems, we are getting in the weeds with them. Or we Wait. risk getting in the, in the weeds with them. Presenting a challenge they're having at their school, though, isn't necessarily <clears throat> asking them to come and air their, air their grievances. No, but, grievances. It, but the, to come and present a challenge that the they're having at their school. What's the presenting the challenge to the board? Is to have the board solve it. Or address and, it. And, or address and, it. And so I'm, yes, I, I, I mm -hmm. and that's the weeds I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's but otherwise, the, the only, yes, and I'm not saying that we present a solution to that problem, but is there a way for us to Get a bigger know that the you. information that we're getting from Michael that's is okay. representative and and I don't want to imply. Well, I'm I'm kind of an untrusting person, so this doesn't really have to do with you, Michael. But I also feel like my my tenure on the board, I have felt or heard, you know, people saying, "Well, that's not what happened," or "That's not, you know, how I feel," or "What's going on at the high school?" So it tends to make you question. Well, this funnel thing. There is a lot of opportunity to curate. Yes. Yeah. And I think we saw that with our prior superintendent. But Phil, there's, is, Phil. Is, is, is there a, I mean, it sounds like there's just a huge benefit to these skip meetings as they were, where, you know, normally a teacher would go to the superintendent and say, hey, this is a challenge I'm facing. But at the same time, like, in my day job, there's a lot of benefit to me going to my boss's manager and saying, hey, this is a challenge I'm facing that I don't think is being addressed. Or, or you know, or, Well, what if they present so, it together? That would be great. That would because be great. if they skip, mm -hmm. yeah. then that's a slippery slope. Right. So now I'm going against what I just said a little while ago. But it is a slippery slope because I they're... Think I, I think I can get you there. Huh. I yeah. Think, I, I think I'm... I, so here's what I think is going to happen <clears throat> in policy governance. And again... This might be a modification or whatnot. I think what's going to happen is you're giving me instructions. In August, you're going to give you gave me a really rough draft today. In August, you're going to give me a more refined rough draft. And in September, you're going to say, draft is final. Okay? What I have to do is I have to take the rough draft and say to the administrative team, okay, folks, here we go. This is what the board is looking for us to do. Now, how are we going to get there? What are the goals that we're going to set so that you can translate that back? And maybe what you need, in addition to my interpretation report that comes each month, is here's our general progress towards the goals that the administrative team has set. And that report for the last two years I've written as an administrative team who had opportunity to provide that report and often other people from the team came and presented. We actually started with specific reports from individuals, but then we realized we were all moving towards the same goals. And so we are, we're then the team, you're getting a team report that says, here's our, first you get from us, here's the goals that we think accomplish the ends that you've set, and we'd like some feedback about whether you think they're gonna accomplish that or not. And then the second piece of that is on a monthly basis, that whole team puts input into that report and can be available. So we got to get the report out and we got to know, do you want somebody specific to come to the meeting and talk about the goals or can we get more information about this or whatnot? I, 
think we could modify and play with that so that you're hearing from the <coughs> whole, I think it would be cabinet in, in a district case, uh, about the progress towards, that we're making towards the goals, with, that then you get the interpretation from me about how I think that's translating in the, in the actual interpretation report, little by little. But every single month, what that does is the goals tie back to the mission. So you know that we're moving towards the mission every month. We're tying the goals back, and you're getting a report from a broad group of people. And what I get out of that is the report. I can tell you I didn't write pretty much more than two paragraphs in the last three that I did. It was the team. So the, the team really has the expertise in the areas that we needed to go. It's not exactly policy governance. I think it's an add-on to policy governance. So, but in addition to the EL report, it would be like the cabinet report. Yeah. So, and we would vote to accept the EL report, but the cabinet report That's just would ours. be informative. Right. The, it, I don't know. That that feels. Well, it sounds like it would be me. more of an ends report. So we, on a monthly basis we would be getting an update to where we are on our ends, which is the exciting stuff of what the schools are doing. It's not just looking at, you know, compliance with the ELs, which those are, they are kind, they are kind of boring, but it's, it, if you remember that that's what sort of, gives us the accountability that he's not breaking the law, he's following, you know, yeah, it, it just <laughs> allows us to do that. And they are kind of, they're not really exciting. That's not the exciting stuff. The exciting stuff is the ends mm -hmm. and, and knowing how we're going. And I don't want to waste administrators time to come in and give me a, a PR boost on, Oh, here's some great pictures of kids. I mean, it's fun and it's nice, but that is not, we have one meeting a month. I want to know how are we doing toward accomplishing the ends? Because we've got a, we've got a group of kids coming through and, and I want to provide them. My reason for being on the board is I want kids coming through our system to come out with a top-notch education for the for you know and so that's what I want to focus on so it and sounds like what Michael's proposing yeah would... that sounds great to me mm -hmm. so you're but would you want to keep any portion of like what the principals were bringing to I think you? that is part of part of people being proud of the work they do I think they're excited cool. about the work they do and and then doing a good job so I think yes. Because they could mindfully tie each piece. I don't want it to be a chore for them. I want it to be something they want to do. If it's something that feels like too much or extra, okay. But, but they I, I know that also doesn't necessarily fit in policy governance, but I think it is, is about people showing the work they do when they're doing good work. How do we encourage the, the more, you know, the more uncomfortable conversations though? You know, if this is a, a ground, like a boots on the ground report, that Michael is encouraging the staff to provide. There, there's still that element of, hey, I'm telling my boss something that, and he's going to bring it to this oversight uh, group. Yeah. There's still that element of like, geez, do I want my boss to know I'm unhappy? Or yes. Yes. You want not only me to know that you're unhappy because I already no, but know I'm, what I'm unhappy, saying is, but you want the board to know that something's not going the way mm -hmm. that it needs to go to achieve the ends. And if you mm -hmm. look at the reports that we produced at, at, at uh, in the Grand Isle Supervisory Union, you will see as often in the report, maybe less often in the reports, mm -hmm. things that weren't working. Okay. The, well, and they, I also think that's partly our job. Right. I mean, that in that conversation with Melinda, she had a slide up that had some sort of data that was um, not worrisome, but yeah, mm, that's interesting. And so we asked her about it, and she talked. No. I mean, it's 
let's not just enjoy the presentations. No, right. Let's ask more. Mm -hmm. um, even the good stuff, you know, well, th that's great you had that event. How many parents came? Do yeah. you know the demographic of the parents who came? You sure. know, do you feel like you're reaching the parents who don't have access to the internet? I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. not necessarily their job because it is hard to be one person seated, seated in front of this group, yeah. um, you know, and say, you know, I'm really not doing a good job at this. Mm -hmm. So really when we're saying report, we're not just talking about a written report that we're talking about people coming here that we have the opportunity then to, you know, investigate more of what they're talking about. Because if it is just a written report that we receive from staff members, we don't get that opportunity that you're talking about. I didn't think it was a written report, but maybe I'm misunderstanding. We get the, principal, we get the principal's reports that are written every month. I meant this new thing no. that Michael's talking about. Oh, yeah. About. So, Kit, I think, you know, I don't come from an education background. I work in healthcare. And so when I think about a progress note, a progress note covers both. What's going well? And what are your barriers toward your goal? And what's not working? Because when you do a progress note, that's your opportunity to shift the direction of your care plan. And so, this is not a care plan, but when you say progress note, I think about you're writing the full spectrum of, all right, we've accomplished these things, we've not accomplished these things. Yep. And sometimes it's this new stuff happened. Mm -hmm. You know, this person lost their job and doesn't have food security anymore, so we have to shift these series of goals or we are not able to get bus drivers so we have to you know we have to shift based on external factors um so a progress note is really when i think of a progress note it's really what have you accomplished what are internal barriers what are external things that have changed in the environment as you're working towards goals so i think i like that because i th i have thought that also and I actually asked this in one of the ends committees because <coughs> when I read through those EL reports and I read through the very riveting policy governance book <laughs> I think there's not an oppor there is an opportunity for one voice in how things are going and that's the downside of it right the downside of policy governance the upside is that we're not in the weeds and we're not micromanaging and I think that is the benefit of it is because I don't come from education so you don't want me helping in any way <laughs> um, but also it's it feels like you're missing that well-rounded piece of like you know mm -hmm. all systems are messy and imperfect and if we're only hearing perfect things it makes everybody think that doesn't seem like it's reflecting. Anyway, sorry to that was very long. Mm -hmm. no, that was no, you know, that's that's true. And you have just completely eased my fears with that last line. If we're only hearing perfect things, then we essentially have a right to be suspect, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and to poke a little bit. <clears throat> and sometimes everything does go right, and that's yeah. awesome, but not not often not is that been my experience right. in life. I am confident I will bring able to bring you a challenge on a regular basis. <laughs> right. I think it would be great if we asked the principals also to start aligning, or not just principals, anyone who comes to present, aligning some of their content with the ends. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, good. And the portrait of a graduate. So yeah, like if they're nice gonna, right? For those mm -hmm. to have some yeah. consistency for us. To yes. See like, yeah, because I know it's, some of them have been like, oh, here are the test scores, but then others didn't report on that. So it's, I like that. Yeah. A consistent format of how these presentations should be provided to us. Okay. And I love the idea of a consistent format where we have like, yeah, show, tell us the positive elements of these ends that are, you know, occurring or that you're working towards, <laughs> but also, like you said, what are some barriers to these ends? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, you mean like state data being comparable <laughs> to the last <laughs> state data? Ever coming out? <laughs> yeah, as a side note, there's taco casserole. Yeah. Thank you. Is that you? Good. Okay. I yeah. need a recipe. This can be a 
This can be a monthly thing if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try it because I was allergic. Are you allergic to peppers? Really? Yes. I made it like an hour before I came, and okay. I have that's zero why, memory why, of what I put in. It. So <laughs> allergies don't I wanted to try and look really yummy, but then I was like, ooh, we don't want to end this way. It tasted like there was maybe a little bit of jalapeno. Yeah. Or... That's fine. Just no bell pepper. Um, Could be. Chilies? Mm -hmm. Anywhere. Chilies. I'll try another time. Yes. When we've yeah, there are bad chilies in there. Yeah. Yes. But yes, thank you for everyone who brought good foods. Yeah. If we're able to swing having some kind of staff member or principal or anybody from the school, like custodian, anybody, like do every month coming by to do that kind of report with the, you know, how the success of the ends and barriers to the ends, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that would be really valuable for the community oh who's gosh. coming out too to see that. I mean, when we sit about talking about EL reports, I'm sure people are just like, but yeah. something yes. like that would be they that would be they would be able to take that information in a different way. They have more of a connection to that. Yeah. That's and again I think the only barrier to it is them having some kind of fear of reprisal, but that's not gonna happen because Mike's great. Mm -hmm. Does right? violate any policies, Dan? Well I think it's well, I think the <clears> expectation <throat> is that there's gonna be We've got to build a culture where any information from failure is just a first attempt at learning, yeah. right? As long as it's they, they're fail. corrected by. And you know, we're starting he's, this he's, effort on so early where that does, can be does superintendent nurtured. Have to be the one that does the and fostered. And cultivated. And cultivated. And, and then stewarded. He's responsible yeah. for it. He's <laughs> responsible for, for the ultimate end report at the end of the year. But if it gets mm -hmm. put together by, and I would hope, I would yes. hope that he's using his people because I'm guessing he isn't, hasn't, have you, you haven't been an, a primary school, elementary school teacher where you're really trying to teach I have three children months of being an <laughs> elementary school principal. That's about the extent of it. And so all of my superintendent is curriculum with elementary, coordinators. But. I mean, all of those folks should be yeah, the collaborative it's, the it's a collaborative yes. effort mm -hmm. to to meet the ends. So yeah. I think this conversation just also ties in really nicely with what's next on our agenda. Mm -hmm. Um because I know that that was something that, as a board, we were feeling a little bit challenged by, that we were doing our superintendent evaluation process solely on the EL reports and our acceptance of them. And I think now I can be touchy-feely and share my feelings on this. That felt very rubber-stamped to me. Um, because we accepted these reports every month, therefore, that was the evaluation, and that was the extent of the evaluation. So. Um, just kind of not to move on but just kind of saying how i think if if we're looking at other ways mm -hmm. to bring information from um members of the school district that are not and it's not just getting filtered through um from the superintendent's perspective but we're hearing different voices around topics i just feel like that's that's going to help us also in the second part, in the second phase of the evaluation process too and how we're how we're approaching that rather than just these acceptances of EL reports. And I know we moved towards that last year with our like trial run of an actual different evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, so which I appreciated yeah. us doing that one last year. And I, I happened to find before coming tonight this, um, I think we're on the evaluation committee, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's Chelsea and you and... Yeah. Probably you. Sarah, yes. 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 Sarah, you are. So a handout you all had, had given us, um, evaluation, superintendent evaluation goals for the remainder of 23-24. To be reviewed and reassessed in June slash July of 24 as part of the, the 2024 superintendent evaluation in August of 2024. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but um, 
We're going to evaluate you based on <laughs> next month. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting alone. Get ready. I think I'm doing great. <laughs> really good words for our statement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your work here. The report accepted. No, it's, <laughs> we're doing great. So how do people feel about last how we did it last year? I mean, it, it felt great. <laughs> <laughs> the evaluation, I, I don't know that I feel like there was very little evaluation. Oh, so much more than there used to be. Okay. Oh, was there? Okay. So I mean, I'm, I'm very new. To, I'm very new to this. Previously, we didn't, yeah. we didn't evaluate. We, the, the acceptance of EL reports monthly mm -hmm. was the evaluation of the and the ends report and the ends report but that so again, again that's the whole that so this is where i get a little frustrated with this board our job is to make sure this district is producing for our students and that ends report is really really important that is the bulk of our work <clears throat> and then the EL reports are just you can't go out of these guidelines so yes the EL reports he we accepted them we accepted the interpretation we didn't add anything in if you had concerns as a board member, our job is to speak up if we have concerns and look at our policies and say, okay, what do our policies say? And if our policies aren't saying enough explicitly that doesn't cover our concern, then we need to add it to a policy so that we are, are, are keeping our district in line in terms of the, the means or the ways that, that we want them to achieve those ends. But that wasn't all last year, the evaluation process we went through. No, mm -hmm. no. And we in fact, added, we added nice this, which is, which... And in the contract, it <coughs> says reviewed annually. Yes. It doesn't say but by it, policy. So governance. I'm still wondering what but you said. You're frustrated. What? What, is what am I frustrated with? Because yeah. we have a policy that says exactly how we're going to evaluate the superintendent, and it says we're going to evaluate the superintendent on his accomplishment or her accomplishment, their accomplishment of the ends, staying within the executive limitations policies. That's what we're saying. But, but I, we also talked about how that did not give us a full rounded picture of how our superintendent was performing because there were aspects, like yes, like there were aspects in that that, yeah, great. What this is was working missing? really well. That is my question. And again, we're now we're looking back at some someone who's gone now, but what was missing? And that is, if there's something missing, we have to speak up and say, okay, I have a concern about this. What do our policies say? Where do we need to flesh out some other guidelines because we're not, we're, we're, we're not happy with or we're concerned about something that's going on? Because, or, and if we want to add, I, I mean, I, we could, we could kind of add a, a thing that says we're going to, they, ha they have to meet the ELs, they have to make sure that they're not, that they're, uh, you know, in compliance with all the executive limitations and they've accomplished the ends to a, to a reasonable amount that we're satisfied with and they pass uh muster with the VSBA uh, uh, superintendent evaluation process. But if you remember <laughs> with the the only people who rated the superintendent the the most the the the, the uh, least least well were board members. So here's what I, this is again the policy governance and my feelings. Um, we are humans. 
Mm-hmm. In a profession, people are reviewed mm-hmm. by other humans. Policies, I do not think there could be, for me, extensive enough policies to cover what I think would be a perfectly successful person in that position because it's a human and policies are not. I think it is too restrictive <clears throat> to only base it upon, even the, the there's, I forget what it's called, um, the community uh, relations policy. Oh, the treatment of, treatment of, treatment treatment of staff. staff. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> you, go ahead. You had something to say um, before I did. Please, Amy. I So I think Speaking the well. way that I see this, Anne, is what mm-hmm. I hear people saying is how do we expand that, how do we get more information to make a more informed mm-hmm. decision? Yeah. So it's not that, I think that what you're saying, what I heard you say is, if you don't like this, then we need to change it. And what I hear, the, what I hear from some board members is, we need more expen- ex- expansive information to make informed decisions. So I think you're actually saying the same thing. Yeah, and because we were just and saying well, in that previous conversation, those EL reports are pretty, <clears throat> Pin, pinpoint they're filtered down that information mm-hmm. comes to us and I think they have I am not negating that they have value obviously they have value especially in the, in the realm that they're in but that there were other pieces that we were that we felt as a board or maybe not as a board maybe individual on the board felt were missing from making a holistic um, evaluation of an individual in a position like you could be really good at what you're doing, but you may be lacking in other areas, and we're not capturing that in a way that, that we feel, that I felt was beneficial not only for us, but also beneficial to the individual in the role to be able to see areas of improvement and gains. Mm-hmm. That's it, that's it. I, that I think is the key. That we want somebody sitting in that chair who is interested in doing the very best job that they can. And in order to do that, they need feedback that is not just them reporting out ends reports and saying, yep, check, check, check. They need feedback on their professionalism and best practices and mentorship. And, and they need to know what we all think as, they, as the board, that person needs to know what we all think, regardless of who it is, needs to know what we think so they know how to improve. And we want somebody who wants that information, right? We want somebody in that seat who's interested in, in constructive feedback to become the best version of a superintendent OSSB can have. And I think progress is a dynamic process. So getting an ends report once a year is not dynamic. It's linear, right? You have, there's not. We as a board can decide how frequently, and we have already sort of discussed about getting some more frequent updates on how we're doing toward those ends. Um, I, I mean, I am, I am, I feel comfortable with, with the EL reports and the ends. What I'm hearing is other people are not. My question though is what are you, what are, what are the concerns and can we, so I, I would, I, I would like to, the, the thing with having it in policy is it's upfront. You know what the expectation is and you know what you're going to be evaluated on. So I guess if for me, that's why I really like this because it's, it's very clear. And if there is something in treatment of staff or treatment of students that we need to be more specific about that people have a concern about or if but isn't it if you think a professionalism yeah, is yeah. not I don't think as, the, I don't think the issue is the policy or it's the basically a self evaluation yeah it's how we mm-hmm. get the, it's how we evaluate it's how we if it's reasonable but I've <laughs> heard something else and this is what happened with the treatment of staff in a meeting we got information 
this is how I interpret it, reasonable. This is the evidence, reasonable. I said, I'm concerned, I've heard other things. Mm -hmm. But could I vote against that report? It was reasonable, it was true. It was his experience. It was his interpretation, interpretation and evaluation of that policy. The policy doesn't have a problem. <coughs> so, but, so what is the concern? The concern was you heard from a staff person. Many. Many staff people mm -hmm. that, that someone was misbehaving. And or, I saw it, yes. And you saw it. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are policies in place. There's a, there are things in place for that person to bring it, either bring it to the board's attention, bring it to the union's attention. And, and you're talking about grievance policy. No, but, but, but even hmm. a complaint. How am I supposed to vote against an EL report you, that you, doesn't have unreasonable information? It doesn't have untrue information, even though it's subjective. So what, okay, think, how well, about this? What about you having a conversation with the person and saying, I've just observed this behavior. Mm -hmm. This doesn't seem professional, uh, you know, like what's going on mm -hmm. and what what uh, what system is in place in this organization to deal with this type of thing? Because we are, I'm not going to be able to be in here watching his every movement. You have to. We're looking more at a system, and we have to be system thinking. There has to be systems in place for for an employee who might feel that they are not being treated professionally to be able to have an avenue to get not just oh because you happen to be there and see that interaction and they have to feel empowered to be able to follow that avenue to to be able to either approach the person and say you know we were having that meeting and I really didn't appreciate the way that you spoke to me. How we would need that to change talk the about EL this. report? So what I think I'm carrying what? Because it would if we would know the superintendent would say we have these structures in place that allow people to be treated let me read. <laughs> it commonly accepted educational professional ethics and practices that it's un that that there 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 are things in place that protect employees that give them avenues to be able to communicate with each other and but it wouldn't change the EL report and if it's just a yes or a no on this EL report that is that is produced by one person how can I vote against that EL report? So if you, you can't. Right, right. I can't. And yet he's, the, someone may be not performing on, in that particular policy professionally, appropriately, ethically, and yet gave me a report that was reasonable that I can't mm -hmm. vote against. And it's infuriating. Okay, I can tell you right now that VSBA unless it was a principal or a direct okay, report really of the, the superintendent, you're not going to know that. I think we're getting too much into the weeds about past experiences mm. and what happened. I'd, mm. I'd like to hear what Ryan has to say, and then I have a question. I, I mean, I do think that there's Thank a you. point here that um, the, the, EL, the EL report does not capture that, but it also may not need to because there are other tools for those grievances, like you said, like you said, those grievance policies. The EL report is not a grievance policy, and maybe that's okay. Like, you know, you, in instances like this where 
we get a reasonable EL report. It's like, check, 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 yep. I mean, I guess he did his job. Maybe that's actually what it should be. And it doesn't have to be everything. It doesn't have to be you know, the grievance element as well. Right, so <clears throat> then I guess my question is, should there be more to the evaluation process than just the health reports? Well, we used VSBA <clears throat> last year. Yeah. VSBA is our organization, so obviously they have a process in place that they're using with other superintendents around the state that's been kind of an accepted process of how we evaluate. So, I, I mean, I feel very, the, the way that we did it last year, having just an, an additional way of thinking through the year, thinking through things, what feedback can we give from an organization that has created this, I mean, that's where I feel like if they, if they have this resource and clearly it's being used by other districts to evaluate superintendents, why would we not use that? Mm -hmm. Because it's not in our policies and it doesn't provide, it didn't, I was on that committee, it doesn't provide any, <laughs> our policies provide a lot of information, a lot of and, and what people seem to be concerned about is stuff that is not going to show up in the VSBA evaluation. I, I, I took that evaluation for <coughs> Lane, and I liked the question so much, I saved them. I saved every single question. It is feedback leaders want. Like, those were not offensive questions. <coughs> No. And, and I, I saved everyone, like I started copying and pasting them into a document because they, so, they were so, to me, informative of like what best practice looks like, just the question itself. Um, I mean, if you want it, I'm happy to share it out with you so you can all see it again unless you have it. But I I would love to see a copy. He also, I, I'm happy he to share also that with you. made uh, <laughs> some great goals for himself. Like right. Looking into the next year, like, following those questions that came <clears> up and I think the I, parts that I you know he to. was evaluated on. Curious and creative and a lifelong learner. <laughs> Hope you're ready, Michael. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Hey one one thing that would clarify you, you this conversation off for me too is courageous. what is the consequence of a bad evaluation? A bad like if we what is the consequence of us not accepting the Yale report? Then they have to go back and do it again. So that's what the question I've been waiting for oh, was. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> when you're not satisfied with the EL report that you get, you suggest to your fellow board members, what about, can we get more information about XYZ, and the rest of the board supports that. Then you get the XYZ that you're looking at. So I think, I think two things. One, it sounds like there is some pretty, I don't know, strict parameters around what an EL report looks like and what, you know, I, I have the sense that, I also have a sense that my expectation is if I'm putting together a team report on a monthly basis of how we're doing towards moving towards the ends, you're getting that from a variety of places, I'm expecting that you're <laughs> evaluating those reports at least in an informal way every single month in those conversations. I'm taking that as formative feedback to say, okay, we're moving in this direction or they're really frustrated about that we're not moving as fast in this other direction. How do I shift resources? How does that work? Yeah. What seems to be a limitation a little bit to me, and I could be completely off base on this, is that it looks like those reports come in at a set time throughout the year. So. 1.1 comes in, or 2.1, or whatever, comes in on this month. 2.4 comes in on this month, right? If, as I look at what's been produced, they come in. So they give you a snapshot in time. And I could have been really great with that staff relationships or communication for the first three months that I'm here, and I can be awful the last seven months, right? So you want to be able to be having feedback on a regular basis from people about how we're, what progress we're making towards the ends. Not exactly sure how that fits in with the executive limitations. To me, 
the executive limitations say, Michael, this is what you cannot do, right? And so clearly if I do those things, I've got a problem. And I would think that the executive limitations would come in and say, I, I abided by the executive limitations, mm. right? If I didn't, but, you know. So I think, I think that's the crux of my question here is that even if we expanded the EL report to include something that, you know, would incorporate that behavioral piece that we're alluding to here and it failed, but a, how would it fail? I'm sorry, I think I voted no. Right, like let's. No, but it's coming from the person who's being evaluated on it. So what? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> We're taking a little leap here and saying if the board was like, hey, we don't like this. Yeah, right. And that's I think, that, I think that's my question. You're, is, you, you, you make a very valid point as far yeah. as the it like, is a self evaluation. Mm -hmm. And this and, is and this is not a criticism of any ideas that have been expressed tonight. This is my edification. Like if um, if we did expand the Yale report to include these you know behavioral elements, like yeah, you you really blew this up. You really blew this one. You just you did these bad things and it's no good. So we're voting down the CL report. What's the what's the actual consequence then? Like, is the, is the contract not get renewed? Is the vote of no confidence? Like, what what is the bad? Like, let's assume that an EL report's really failed. But it sounds like you just we've not encountered that, so I think we don't decide that. Would but 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 these no, reports, Hannah, it's reports, not. We can't reports, live in a fantasy but land where someone's going to give us a report Hannah, that said I did bad on community. But Hannah, on, these reports are not without. Staff. They have to come with data. They have to come with data. Yes. There has to be something that is based on. Yes. But that and if it's reasonable, even if even, have if, to even if he's it. produced it, and if it's reasonable, we have to accept it. Even if and, I and if we don't like it, if if it's reasonable and we don't like it, and we don't believe it, we say we missed this piece. We modify the we modify the policy right there and say come back to us next month with this new interpretation. Or we're going to have a special meeting in two weeks and you've got to rewrite it with our new with our new policy. I and I I hear you and I realize I'm being real stuck in the mud and doomsday. I just I think the system is faulty in that this idea of an unreasonable interpretation <clears throat> that is objective, thank you, thank you. an objective self-evaluation, we're not, it's not a pass or fail. It's not a you did good or you didn't do good. It's a did you do a good report? That's what it feels like to me. It's not an evaluate, an acceptance or a vote of the superintendent's treatment of staff. It's an approval or vote on the superintendent's report of his or her treatment of staff. What, again, though. So it, it's a fantasy, in my opinion, there is not an opportunity in the structure, in, in, in how we do it, Maybe, maybe we're doing it wrong, but in how we do it, there's not an opportunity to, well, that's not true, because I did, because I did question his, someone's treatment of staff, and I'm sorry to go back to a past experience, but I was then asked, is the, back to the same script, is the interpretation reasonable? Yep. Is the evidence there? Yep. I can't vote against it. If those is the if that is the only criterion for whether that passes, and then that's the evaluation on treatment of staff, it's not enough. There's not a question there, and I'm asking this legit. Is there's not a question? Is it reasonable? Is it complete? Yeah, there is. There is. Is the is it reason? Is the interpretation reasonable? Is there a rationale for the interpretation? Mm -hmm. And then there is, is there enough evidence to support that interpretation? Yes, mm -hmm. you can include the evidence that's 
supporting that. And you can subjective, disprove. subjective, subjective. But it's not, not complete. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not including evidence against it. Against it, right? So. when you look at data interpretation and you just like I don't like any of these low points and just skim them off that's an incomplete evaluation so I think that is a complete question is important and I think that speaks to what you're what you're kind of stuck on mm -hmm. is that is the information has felt incomplete and when we talk about thinking about a, a more broad perspective of what's presented in, either through progress reports or another means, that is a way in which to determine if the information we're getting in EL reports is complete. And so if it's incomplete or there's some other fault to it, we vote it down and then it, they we just, don't accept it. We don't accept it. We don't it. accept Thank it. You. Thank they you. have to go back. And then the superintendent just has to rewrite it and resubmit it? No, well, it wouldn't be able they to. Have to. They yeah. have to. They have to get back in compliance. Oh. And if it's egregious enough, <clears throat> we have cause to end the contract. I see. So, so that's the consequence. So in Thank particular, you. so let's that's look at treatment of staff. So this is what, these are the guidelines. With respect to the <clears throat> treatment of paid and volunteer staff, the superintendent shall not operate without written personnel rules. Clarify rules for staff. Provide for effective handling of grievances. And protect against wrongful conditions. So th those are, so then he gets to interpret, or they get to interpret. Whoever's the, the superintendent gets to interpret. So how am I staying, how am I staying within those rules I've got personnel rules I have uh, I have clear rules for my staff I have a way for them to handle grievances I have a way here sometimes it, it's just a matter of knowing the systems that are in place so that staff people can can be ha know what they're what they're uh, what they can do Number two, you can't discriminate against any staff member for non-disruptive expression of dissent. And, and we've had, I mean, in the past, we did have some staff that were, felt like they were, but nothing went to the union. No, I mean, so again, you might, that's part of the problem is if we've got systems in place, if the district has these systems in place and we know they're there, then if that staff person doesn't <clears throat> choose to, to follow that, or that staff person meets with the union and the union says, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't defend that behavior that you, that you did, then there isn't, they don't have, there's nothing they can do. And, and if you're learning from somebody, a staff person, I mean, maybe we need to add a number four, maybe there's something else that's gonna, that we need to have here that says you can't, um, I, I don't know, something that doesn't fit in the interpretation that he gives us, but it, the interpretation that he gives us of all these things seems reasonable, then we have to say, okay, well, let's add number four and say, you can't do this. But I, I think that, I think it comes back to, is it complete information that we're getting? Mm -hmm. Because you can, I, he, I really do hear, I hear what you're both saying. And I don't think it's a suggestion of changing the policies or disrupting the structure that it exists, but how do we reflect a more full and accurate EL report? In that, I think that question of is it complete, mm -hmm. like did you provide complete information or did you just skim the top stuff off and share that? I think. 
that would be helpful because as a new board member, I read their EL reports and I'm like, well, this guy seems perfect. He's doing everything right. And that doesn't also seem human because I know, you know, we make mistakes and we. Absolutely. But yeah, but <laughs> I guess I, I, to me, we're at this level. We're not looking mm -hmm. at the minutia of, of no, and I and I and don't mean so include I, every minute detail. I, I and the EL report doesn't include every minute detail, but it includes the themes and the the generalities and the things. Yeah, and I didn't find that the VSBA uh, evaluation gave much more. Well, it's interesting. No, but it's helpful to them. I was going to say, Heather just mentioned it's helpful how for leaders to get that feedback. Like the question and as good employers, valuable. we should be providing that if we want people okay. to do a really good job. All right. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, then, and I, then I think we ought to add it to our to our policy and say, in addition to the ELs and the and achieving our ends, what are we going to say? He must pass the or. Submit to just submit to it because it's feedback for him. Okay. okay. If you read this, it could be it could be informative to us if it's page, really terrible, but it's also feedback. It really him. talks about the relation working relationship between the board and the superintendent, and the value of the opportunity to set goals with the board. So I mean, this this was written exactly as the Vermont Super I'm sorry, School Board Association wrote it, and I was so impressed with their work. That's why. I knew I'd only have one shot. Like once you hit submit, you can never go back. So I went back, back, back to the beginning, and I grabbed it all because I was like, "This is good stuff." Um, so I know it's long, but if you take a minute to read it, the focus really is on the working relationship. Right, and I saw all of this stuff as being it's in our EL. It's in We're, our. We are not ELs. set up to enhance the performance of the superintendent. Without giving, you, you can't prove if you have if you have no feedback other than check marks. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, it, he he does have to look at how am I doing providing the board communication to the board. We phonetic. I guess he he. I don't know. I mean, I guess if we're not getting what we need, we need to talk to him. I I don't know. I just I. I, I'm okay with it as long as we put it in here that we're that in addition to this we're gonna he, he's gonna submit to getting feedback through the VSBA's superintendent evaluation for his own personal growth. I I mean it's it's fine with me. I just. Hopefully, as we move forward, if people have concerns, they bring it up because otherwise it doesn't, it creates a distrusting relationship. Okay. And that is really, I, it would make it hard to be a leader and it makes it hard as a board to function if people are going, oh, well, this EL report, uh, I don't think this is, I don't think this is, accurate because someone in the one or two people in the community come up to you and say something and that is n not a reflection of what happened i brought it to executive session and i brought it to the superintendent himself i am really getting in fact i guess insulted I by how you are uh, um, representing what happened it is in the past. I think this is a really constructive conversation. I just ask that that, okay, I, I need to express sorry. that that is very angering to me. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're referring to, so it's hard. I, I mean, I know what I just said, but I'm, I don't remember that particular incident, but I'm hopeful that people will share their concerns when we're when we're looking at policy so that we can we can we can improve a policy 
if there is information that people feel isn't there. I, I, I don't know. I. So it sounds like we are feeling like the EL reports obviously are, are going as they're going. If there are issues where we're not getting information that we feel would be representative or, or important for the board to get, we as a board then need to reflect on our policies and make improvements there. It sounds like as a board, we are open to continuing to use the VSBA superintendent evaluation as an augment to the EL report and the ENDS reports that we receive. Um, with putting that in language in the policy that we have regarding superintendent evaluation. Is that where we're at? <coughs> yeah. So we need to change that policy? Right, where there is a policy. Is there any, Mike, Michael, is there anything in your contract that, that would suggest that we have to modify your contract in order to get you to submit to the VSBA? I don't think there's a no. Okay. <laughs> no, I think we that wrote. That was an issue before. Well, I think we wrote. All right, so there's there's practical. I think that there maybe is the letter of the I try to teach administrators, you can follow every policy to the T and still not be successful. Yes. You can follow all the laws to T and still not be successful. There's another element to this, which I suspect is what you all are talking about, and it's mm -hmm. the human element that's hard to measure and hard to know. You know it's not right when you see it, and you know it's right when you do see it. Um, my take is you've got a contract with me that's written in a way that uh, if you don't want to renew me, you tell me that you don't want to renew me and that we're done, and we, we move on. There's a time frame with it and whatnot, and when you do renew me, you decide, I don't want to sit down and negotiate with you. What are you going to What's the salary going to be and whatnot? If there's a cost of living and if you want to put some sort of merit pay in there, or geographic conditions, you put those in. You're in control of it. Is is what's going on with that? And it resets. It it does what it needs to do. At some point, I'm going to understand what the timeline for the evaluation is. If it's <coughs> just EL wrote, so I'm used to writing a mid-year report about how we're, what progress we're making towards the goals. I think you're going to see an informal way of, of reporting out, and I'm going to expect that you're going to provide feedback. I'll certainly be disappointed if you don't provide feedback that is potentially negative at that spot, because you know you don't want to surprise me any more than I want to surprise you. Uh, so I think that that's, there's a conversation that has to happen along the way. You have already, with your ends, given me more direction in a probably three years worth of work in Essex Caledonia and at least a couple in Grand Isle Supervisory Union, right? I've had to intuit what is the board's goals and then put down for the board, this is what your goals are, what do you think? And so you all are already coming out of the gate with a much more clear expectation. What I have to do is I have to translate what you're expecting into language that doesn't bog down administrators and teachers and then they come back and report. So they're not gonna, they're gonna come back and report on the goals that we set. I pitch, the way I'm picturing this is they're gonna come back on, on the goals with, the, that's what they're reporting, which is going to tie into your ends. And if it doesn't tie into your ends, then I haven't set the goals in a way that's going to accomplish what you, what you need. I don't think that they're necessarily gonna be sitting there saying, the end was uh, communication. Right? Because they have to interpret that. They have to understand what it's more complicated, and that's not what that's not necessarily what their role is. Mm -hmm. It's my role to put together things that are going to accomplish what your my interpretation of what you're looking for. So no, there's I'm never going to sit to you and say you can't do that. My contract doesn't say that. If you say I'm not happy, I'm going to say okay. You know, and we're gonna we're gonna go. Already we're going to go our separate ways and that that's that's what will happen if it, if it's at that point or you're going to say we'd like to see this this and this and i'll say great i can do that or no i can't do that right if i had a board I, I worked for a board that wanted me to do things that were unethical and maybe illegal and i chose not to do that and they voted no confidence in me <laughs> okay i'll wear that fine that board turned over completely so 
you know, I think that that's, that's the way that I operate is that I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, I'm going to do it in ways that are professional and responsible. Uh, do I think that you're going to bump into staff members along the way that aren't happy with decisions that I make? You bet I do. I'm probably going to do it because you make me do it. <laughs> Right? You might have something that they're not going to be real thrilled about. And still, it makes sense for kids and accomplishes the ends. And that's okay. My goal is to do that in a way that people feel heard and people feel cared for and that they understand that it's not a personal decision that I'm making here. It's a, it's a decision that, that is professional and I, I listened to what, what people had to say. and didn't think that that particular way was going to get us to where we need to be. I've already spent time with the cabinet saying, look, I'm never going to be the smartest person in the room about most topics. There might be a couple that I can come into this, in, into one of the school buildings and probably know more than, than anybody else on the staff. But it's not all of them. You didn't hire somebody who knows everything about everything. You hired somebody who understands that there are people out there that know more than I do and I need to amplify that voice and follow follow that direction. So what I've but what I've said to folks on the cabinet is I learned long ago that I've come up with a plan that I think is gonna a hundred percent get us there. It is the best plan and it is fantastic. And if people implement it at fifty percent, it's gonna be not as good as the plan that they come up with, it's only 80% as good as my plan, but they implement it with 100% of their effort, right? And that's what leadership has to understand, is that I don't get to dictate everything from on high. I have to work with the people that I have, I have to amplify their voices, and I have to, I have to bring out the talents in folks. And now if I've got folks that are doing things that aren't acceptable, then I have to call people on that, right? You probably walk into my office, not today, but at some point this year, you'll walk into my office, and if your goal is the, your measure of a superintendent, I'm glad to see it's not in any of the ends, that the superintendent's desk will be clean and tidy at the end of every single day, I will not succeed in that. <laughs> And I can work really hard to do it. I, I have tried as an assistant principal, as a principal, and I just realized I would rather spend time with people at the end of the day than making sure that my desk is cleared off. I'll always be able to find everything. I won't lose stuff. You won't necessarily like the way that my desk looks like, perhaps. Right? I'm kind of glad. I'm, it's the only thing I'm glad about being way up <laughs> and away from the rest of the world <laughs> is that you don't get to see it without purposely coming in to find it. But yeah, I. I hear there's a component. There's a component that that the mechanics of the of the ends and executive limitations feel limiting to some people. And so part of what I think you're trying to do as a board is you're trying to figure out how do you how do you break through that barrier of the limitations and stay true to policy governance. You know, so do I want the first thing that people do when they're not happy with the decision I make is to come to the board? No, I would expect that you're gonna expect that they're gonna follow the complaint policy that you have in place. It's, you're actually the last stop on that. You know, so uh, I think that there's probably some middle there's some middle ground. Uh, beginning administrator in me saw the world in black and white. Administrator at this point sees there's a whole lot of gray out there. Amy Miner would be really proud of hearing that. <laughs> I'll send her the I'll send her the video. <laughs> so, you know, and I think that the last piece I would say is, from a board, my standpoint as a leader, is that our role is to grow people and help people achieve success. There's not enough teachers out there. There's not enough principals, there's not enough support staff, right? There's not enough superintendents. You've got to take what you've got and you've got to be able to, to help folks develop in a way that helps them be successful. And you have to, I have to develop in a way that helps me be successful. Some of the things that I've done in the last 10 years of being a superintendent will work really well here. Some won't. We need to jettison those, pick up new ones, 
and figure out what, what it is, what, what's going on. What I do know is that the relationship piece of it is a critical, it's a critical <clears> piece. <throat> and folks have to, folks have to know that I'm accessible, that I'll listen. I've already met, I met with the association around an issue that was percolating back, I think it was in May, right? And I, I you know, I think that that's, I think that's an important, they play an important role in having that relationship there. And tomorrow I'll be over at the, I'll be over at the uh, summer school program for at least a little bit. Um, so people will see me around, people will be there and hopefully what that has done for me in the past is had people say, I can tell Michael things that I'm thinking about and I don't have to do it in the formal way. I can come back and have the conversation. So, I don't know, that was, I don't even remember what the question was to start with, so. <laughs> that's it, was, I, the question was, is there anything in my contract that limits? That's right. Don't ever ask me to be brief, huh? That might be another thing that might not be good at. <laughs> Doing anything with this, all this information in terms of changing the policy? Or? Well, I think I think we should we should add uh, a number seven to policy three point four, monitoring superintendent performance. And number seven, we should add um, <clears throat> we can add um, let's see. Sounds like what you're asking to do is, is to incorporate in a, in stakeholder feedback through the use of this. Are we are we wanting to use this VSBA evaluation tool that was put together by the VSBA for school the boards to use? The only question I would ask you about the VSBA evaluation tool is: Did you? Do you own the tool, or does the VSBA own the tool? Uh, and we pay, for it. we pay for it. You paid for the evaluation, and that included access to the tool for perpetuity. No, no, no. Except each for the year fact you that I pay. Like so I think, it, I think that the policy should be vague enough to allow us to choose the tool each mm -hmm. year. Are, are we already paying for this? No, we did. No, we, we paid for it. Paid for year. them to. I think what yeah, Heather did was, oh. Heather said this was a really good tool, I really like it, I'm going to mm -hmm. use it for inspiration in the future, yeah, I'm right. not going to use it wholesale in the future because right. then she'd be using somebody else's tool. Can we right. edit it she enough where we don't have to pay for it? She printed it before yes. she Property well, taxes are going up, part, folks, we got to be frugal. Part of it was the they administered it, so, yeah, you know, right. sending right. out the surveys really and nice. telling the information, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have a... a just impartial. Thank you. Uh, person doing that. A third party doing that. So we Not the, that that alone is worth $1,400. Yeah, can we just like but, know, hire someone else for cheaper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, know BSBA is pretty cheap <laughs> compared right. to other. They are. Yeah. Oh, all right. And that's that's that is fine. Our well, it sounds like just like a, an additional evaluation tool, goal setting, yeah. and feedback. So. Cool. In addition so we've to got that, and then um, we wanted to add complete to AL reports. Yeah. What was that? We wanted to add the word complete to the EL reports. Uh, okay. Something so about we're gonna being accurate and complete, right? That the information is accurate and complete. Well, that. Uh, so. So that would be under where's the superintendent's thing. Hey, side note while I was looking that up, if we have questions about what's in these um, accounts payable board packet warrants, when is the appropriate time to bring that up? Um, what, like, do we need an agenda item? Those are typically already paid, right? <laughs> yeah, but if we just have questions yeah. about them or, because every month I, I see these, we sign them, I, I, I mean, I know that half of us don't even look at them. What's what's going on with these? Like, what are what is Kyle our responsibility answer. with these? So Kyle will tell you. Michael went in, and every single thing that was in there that he didn't have a pretty good idea about, 
he's ready for those questions okay. at this point. Yeah, like, but is there, I guess my, my question is, as, as, as a newer board member, what's the procedure about saying like, hey, why did we spend $60,000 to a hearse company? Like, when, when is that well, part that of the meeting? The, that was the ambulance, right? That was yeah. the ambulance. Yeah, okay. yes. <laughs> that is my question, but also my, my question to our board chair is like, is there, it's for health is there a procedure, ah. procedure or something regarding that? Mobile medic if I well, have questions about for health these. Careers. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that a lot of times those have names attached. So it is not an open session that you might bring up something like that. I right. just want to put that out there right now because mm. um, payroll comes through us, right? Sure. So mm -hmm. that you can't bring up in open meeting. Um, I certainly, if I were you and I was questioning something, I wouldn't sign it. Right. Right. Because um, it has to be signed by all of us. Um, but in open session, you can ask anything you're okay. yeah. being asked to approve. Sure. So, and this is where I would say, if this is where we need to understand, so that should be covered in our financial conditions and activities. So that is every that's those are those are checks and things that the district needs to operate so we can't as we we have to we have to sign off on it because it's our it's our role but to to ask us to be able to figure out exactly all of that stuff we've hired him to do that we want to, and then when he's reporting to us on the EL conditions, he's going to tell us those reports, those things, there are processes in place that they get looked at by one person, then over here. And so that there is a process in place so that when we get those as a board and we need to sign them because it's how the district keeps operating. Mm -hmm. We are we get assurance from this EL report that there are systems in place that that, that is happening so no. that we right. can just sign off. On no, I trust that the money's being spent well, but if if I'm just curious sure. about any of this stuff. Sure. I, sure. I would suggest That's, I would suggest that there isn't anyone in the central office who would question you coming in and saying why did we spend sixty thousand dollars at a hearse company? <laughs> right. right? Um, I think anyone would be yeah. would be more than willing to answer that question because Absolutely. ultimately it's I, your money. Yeah, and I and I appreciate that, but I think again, like I I think I have my question answered, which is is there a you know, procedure for saying hey, what what was this line item? Well, remember there's a procedure of a meeting, right? So if that's us signing that is not actually on the agenda. So it's not an agenda item where you can, there's discussion, right? So it's um, in terms of process during the meeting isn't necessarily the time to, mm -hmm. to bring it up, but going in and asking a question, there's and there, to central office, there's yeah. nothing. And then if you didn't like to answer, asking for an agenda item next meeting. Oh, okay, that's the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what I was looking yeah. for. All right. Or if you just wanted more information, you could ask for an executive session if it was yeah. a person, if it was something that was, you know, not public information. So. But again, that's, I mean, going around in a circle here, but that's under our, one of the EL reports regarding financial responsibility. Right, right. So we, you know, so we're entrusting our superintendent to spend our money yeah. Yeah. appropriately. And yeah, it's like a little. But it's also something he's off. signing off on. No, I totally agree. Which is also his I responsibility. I totally agree, but that's where it gets so. kind of like. Yeah. Because again, by the time these have reached us, these have these have yeah. been paid out mm -hmm. typically. But if, again, if it is, that's I think that's ultimately Hannah. Thank you for yeah. that because it is ultimately like this is being presented to us, and I'm approving this. I don't know everything I'm approving here. Yeah. What is the appropriate time and means to ask, what am I approving? You know, and mm -hmm. I think you've all answered the question very well. Thank you. That actually goes 
And you feel a little better than you're the Hurst with the ambulance. <laughs> the, the old Hearst ambulance company duo. It's like a KFC Taco Bell. No, it's a, it was, it's used. It's for health careers. And I guess that was the vendor who could deliver it. And we get, we now own a original. Yeah, we're going to brand it RTCC and. Um, wait, wait, so do we own an ambulance or a Hearst? An ambulance. An ambulance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, well, we don't want to really have a lot of faith in the health careers yeah, if you got a hearse. No, no. <laughs> or maybe we do. <laughs> the old the vocational center yeah. funeral director exactly. program. Yeah. <laughs> branching out. Um, so with all of our agenda items <clears throat> having been uh, hit in one way or another, um, unless there is further business to discuss, or anyone has a need for an executive session, I am going to adjourn this meeting. Oh, well, I, yeah. I oh, have, you have other business. <laughs> other business. Um, I just wanted to let the board know that I will be resigning after this meeting. Oh. Um, I, um, I mentioned to Hannah earlier this year that I was really committed to seeing through to this transition to a new superintendent. Um, but time has come for me to focus on the schools that my children are actually in and put my energy there. Um, and just want to say it's been such a pleasure to serve with all of you. I think this is a great board, and I think that's why it's taken me this long to step down, um, even with no, no children in this district. Um, but yeah, I've just really enjoyed my time here. It's been kind of a wild few years, <laughs> and I think everyone is really invested. It's great to see a board that can have these conversations, that does come, you know, that we can kind of toss things around and people are invested and engaged. Um, and I am confident that you guys will all just rock it from here on out and welcome Michael and congratulations on being here and working with all these wonderful people. And I look forward to seeing what the district, how they move forward. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so that and means we Andrew. have to apply. <laughs> do you, do you have, have you been working your community to find I someone to? Lately, we there's a potential individual. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, so how does this work? Is there like a special It will election? go to the school board. I mean, it will go to the, I'm um, sorry, not the school board, the select board. It'll basically be advertised and then people will go, the select board will appoint. Oh, uh, appoint to buy the select board. Okay. Yeah. Is that for all three towns? All three towns. Wait, no, that was going to be the board appoint. 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 The board because they kind of they have to because Brookfield decided not to be a part oh, of the process, right? But the towns can it's because it's a town representative. They can then mm -hmm. say this is the person that we're putting forward mm. as our. Mm. That was an excellent question to ask. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm full. So within a certain <laughs> amount of time, we have to advertise it, and then within a certain amount of time, we need to speak with. I think it's like the hordes days. of individuals that are going to want it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, really? You have a, we interviewed, we interviewed people like for the Brookfield position. Didn't we? We interviewed yeah. them. You answered that. I was, there I was, was two walking people. through security in Logan Airport, remember? Yeah, <laughs> I think I have a year and a half left. Are you Braintree yeah. or Randall? But they have to be reelected in oh. March. And I don't think yeah. Braintree was a contested seat, was it? Right. It wasn't no. after I was told it was going to be, but it wasn't. No, and I literally, it was like, it was like 4.58 that I like submitted my thing. My yeah. And then Ryan, so we interview <laughs> and then um, I think we decided, we, we went into executive session, we voted, we told them in that meeting. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, um, and then the, whoever is voted in serves until the end of uh, that person's term. No, they no. serve until the election. They get have to do Oh, the just election. until the next election. Yeah. Oh, wow. you, oh, yeah, you did have to run right away. away. You run. That's right. Thank you. You're and an then the town clerk will never get, will, won't realize the change, and they'll call you every year telling you you're up for election. I think oh. it, that depends upon your town clerk. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well, perfect. We don't have a town clerk, so we're never getting Because our town clerk <laughs> said he had no idea. Yeah. Brendel doesn't have a town clerk? No, not right now. No. Oh, you should, is what's on. Go. Yes, it's, Go. Yeah, it's a goal. Okay, so I you know, wrote on this part. Um, so, meeting adjourned. Mm. 8.45. Nice.